Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from reaching your goals? BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's all done 100% online. First, you'll take a short questionnaire about yourself and your needs, and then you'll be matched with one of their over 20,000 licensed professional therapists. You can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's 20,000 plus therapist network, which may not be locally available in all areas. And the service is available worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist and you'll receive a thoughtful, timely response. And you can set up weekly phone or video chats with your therapist. BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional in-person therapy and financial aid is available to those who need it. BetterHelp has a special offer for our viewers. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash second empire. That's better H E L P dot com slash second empire and join over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of a licensed professional therapist. Hello everybody and welcome back. Me and my good friend Atlas here. Uh, Hope you've had a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, we've definitely had a much better week here at the house. So let's go ahead and get into everything that happened uh, this week. First things first, I want to introduce you to my good, good buddy here, my best friend, Atlas, who is my partner in crime. He's my dog. I've had him since he was a pupper. Hi, huh, Atlas, huh? Um, so you'll be seeing a lot more of him because uh, now the house is clean enough, at least in this area, to have him. Uh, we've been having him up. And... Uh, We've been having lots of fun, huh, bud? Well, maybe not so much for him. He loves the yard, though. Also, really quickly, I want to show off this painting my father found, which is quite huge and quite awesome. Uh, it's by A.O. Revenal, and uh, we actually looked him up. He, uh, he's a fairly well-known artist. Um, and uh, it's a real oil painting. This is not a print or anything like that. It's uh, absolutely oil. You know, he looks quite a bit like Mr. Brown right here. So I think that's kind of intriguing. And even though it's definitely not Mr. Brown, um, it doesn't look too terribly far off from a younger Mr. Brown. So uh, we'll put it up in the house here somewhere. Probably have to watch a few more uh, Baumgartner uh, restoration. They do art restoration and uh, probably have to watch a few more of those videos. Uh, figure out exactly what I do need to get that in tip top condition again. Uh, mostly for just cleaning its sake. I don't really want to repair any missing paint or anything. Uh, that and the canvas has come off the stretcher a little bit, so. But, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to that point. <laughs> but it's good to have a nice oil painting, and I think it was 100 bucks, and that for the frame alone is worth it, so. And it's contemporary. The artist is from the time period, so. It should fit in the house quite nicely. So I guess the next thing uh, that happened this week is the priming of these beautiful pieces of wood. These are the same pieces of wood uh, from last week that you saw us put the wood life on them. Uh, we put one more coat of wood life on and now this is our oil based primer. Uh, again, this is what uh, our guy said to use. It's the same stuff that's actually on the windows. Um, he said, of course, the best stuff you could use is lead, but uh, we don't feel we can use that or find it or purchase it uh, or it be morally okay to use it. So uh, we didn't, um, but so these wood pieces are almost ready to go and uh, we've got confirmation that the uh, next batch of Cypress uh, should be coming in to get the rest of the moldings cut and uh, hopefully we'll be working on the mansard soon. Um, how soon? Not quite sure. I would expect it sometime around summer. Um, but, you know, as I said before, it'd be really, really cool to get the, the crown back on uh, this queen of a house, let's say. So about the medallion from last week, uh, the guy got sick this week, so he wasn't able to show up and have you look at this. Um, so I guess Wednesday is what I've been told. Um, and uh, hopefully he uh, feels better and uh, can come have a look and uh, at least help me assess what I need to do to make this right. So uh, that's the news for that. 
As for the Quest 4 beadboard that I mentioned last week up in Peoria, did not pan out. Um, our contact with them, they said, yeah, we think we have what you need. We got up there, um, they had a piece of stuff that was kinda sorta close, that was a half inch. So it was just a lapse of communication. It's a cool shop, they have lots of stuff up there. Uh, but it seems quite frivolous to go on a hunting expedition for things I don't really need at the moment. So we're gonna be moving to the next best option for beadboard, which is to have it cut. Um, so we'll be making new pieces of wood, which is something I prefer not to do because they don't carry the same color. Um, I'm hoping I can get it made out of heart of pine, which is what these boards are, or at least what I believe them to be. Uh, they could be Douglas fir, and to be honest with you, I can't tell the difference between the two. Um, I'm sure, you know, some of you guys can. Uh, I can't. Um, so, it's not going to be a cheap option, but at this point, I feel it's really the only option I have. Um, I've looked around at the other shops. There's not another beadboard that is any what close to the stuff that's in this house, uh, like this stuff is here. Um, not exact, but this is pretty close. So, eh. <laughs> it's another fun one. However, I did not leave Peoria empty-handed. I did find this uh, Krishmer. Uh, manufacturing company, Kreitzmer, I don't know. Um, pretty cool little markings on this toilet. Um, from what I have researched, this company was not around very long. Um, however, they started in 1907 and I think ended in 1920. Uh, if I had my guess, this is probably from around 1911-ish. Um, so pretty old toilet, older than the 1930s one. I was going to be using that bathroom and it's got the cool little markings and stuff on it, which I find, uh, uh, they look nice. So we're gonna be using this toilet in the first floor bathroom instead of the 1930s one that I had before. Um, again, this one has just a little bit more pizzazz, let's say. <laughs> so not a complete waste of time going to Peoria. However, a toilet's not necessarily what I needed. Um, <laughs> that beat board is uh, hopefully not going to be another piece of things that are gonna be holding me up. Um, the nice thing is I have enough of the beadboard currently to at least do two of the walls in there, which means I can at least mount the sink, if nothing else. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that the, <laughs> the lack of a sink is not the most fun thing in the world, and I'm really, really trying to race to get that done. Now the project everybody's been waiting for, of course, which is the bathroom. Yes, more work has been done. Is it done? No. Um... <laughs> The stenciling stuff, uh, they, the stencils just, they, they can take a pretty good beating, but the amount of paint I have to throw through them to get this pattern on the wall because it's, it's more than what you actually would think it is. Um, I'm currently down four cans of spray paint, which is a lot of paint. Um, and I'm starting to clog my stencils. So I'm waiting on the third version of the stencil uh, to come in. It's the exact same stencil, just, you know, number three of it because I've clogged the other two or... The second one's almost clogged, but I've got quite a bit of done in here. So let me show you, and I'm hoping to finish it tonight. Um, we shall see. You can see where the two sconces are and uh, where those all belong. And in the window there, you can see I've started to wrap around this wall. I have not gotten completely done here quite yet, but that corner up there has now hit the very top. Uh, I've got all of that corner. So from here over is done. And then I've just got a little bit right here and I've also got most of this wall done. So almost everything, which means basically all I have to do is right here under the window. So right there. And then this wall where the stencils are hanging out. Um, so I've gotten very, very close. And of course there's little touch-ups and imperfections and stuff. However, I can do a lot of that while the sink is in place. <laughs> So I don't really have to come in here and touch every single piece uh, right this minute. Um, I can work on more exciting things for you guys like the beadboard or getting the sink in or mounting the sconces, getting the electrical done in here, putting the, uh, the mirror up, putting the top cap around some of the beadboard. So things look more finished in here. Um, and so they're more usable as well, which is the bigger concern for me. Um, but of course I have to get done with the, the spray paint element here. Um, now I know a few people did raise concern about, you know, why spend all this money on paint and then cover it with spray paint. Um, well, if you can see in the pattern, 
very little actual spray paint is on the wall. It's still mostly that paint, which or it's mostly the mineral paint, which means this wall still breathes rather well. Um, and yeah, I mean, in the areas where it's done, like over here, it does look pretty good, I have to say. So, you know, it's starting to get pretty exciting. It's starting to look like, well, like a room. And I have to wonder to myself, is this something similar to what somebody saw here in the past? You know, like, is this getting close to what people remember this room looking like? You know, like, it's, I don't know, it's getting exciting. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it so far. Uh, of course, there are imperfections all over the place and little, uh, you know, mishaps and things like that. But that's actually not a complete terrible thing. These, you know, wallpapers were usually woodcuts where they would, you know, roll ink onto a piece of wood and then stamp it down on the paper to make these prints. So every single time you did that, there was always some slight imperfection. Um, you know, to make a point of this, over at the Campbell house, Andy told me that they would purposely put extra bits of emulsion or block in the screens before they would screen print the designs on. Why? Because it would help mimic the imperfection of the process back then. Of course, there's a bit more imperfection here and there with my wallpaper, but I'll be correcting most of that. But some of that I want left behind because you want that sense that it was, it was handmade. And yeah, this is absolutely a handmade print, um, which I find pretty cool. Again, it's another way to leave my DNA in the house, which I think is great. Um, yeah, they, uh, they had good tastes. I really like the way this is starting to look. So I'm gonna get back at this. We're gonna hopefully do a nice big long time lapse for you guys, or at least a time lapse for you guys, uh, showing you the process of this. Uh, there will be a few little stops here and there between because I have to let the stencil dry between using it. Um, so <laughs> it's a time consuming process, guys. I've been busting it on this, really. It, it's been, I mean, it's, it's a drawn out process. It's an enjoyable process, but a very drawn out one. So uh, let's get back in there, get some music rolling, get some fun going. And uh, yeah, we'll come back to you guys and uh, we'll see what we've accomplished. All right, so let me show you where I've gotten to. It's, uh, spoilers, it's not as far as I would like to because uh, I had one issue. And this would be that issue. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the stencils. Um, however, if I take it over here to the wall, and this one's fresh, obviously it's not red, it's uh, the cardboard color. If I go to line it up, let's pick that one. As you can see, it doesn't quite line up. Uh, reason being for that is this one's actually a wee bit too small. Uh, so the guy that's cutting my stencils for me uh, that has a laser cutter, um, I don't know exactly what happened with the file or he said his computer crashed while I was trying to do this. So maybe there was a potential fluke there. Um, you know, I don't know a whole, whole lot about uh, laser cutting anything. Um, it's an Illustrator vector file and uh, yeah, I'm not exactly for sure how it all works. Uh, but for some reason, this one came out a bit smaller, and uh, I don't want to push this stencil that I have been using to the absolute brink, because I think I've explained this once or twice, but as you continually spray these things, the gaps here, so the spaces where you spray, the lines essentially, 
get thinner and thinner and thinner because spray paint is such a thick material, such a thick paint that it eventually coats it and then you start ending up with very thin lines like these versus like that one there. So you can see it kind of just thins out right here and that's from using a stencil that was already fairly clogged. This one's getting close to that. However, I was able to pull this one out, which looks pretty good. Um, don't worry about this bottom part here because the top of the beadboard's there and that top cap will fit right over the top of that, so no concern there. And you might notice a little bit of chipping plaster. Again, plaster doesn't stick to wood very well and that's that piece of wood that goes around the whole thing, so no worries there either. Now, I still have a little bit up top here and a little tiny sliver here in the corner. Um, that kind of gets interesting because I have to bend a stencil to fit in there, which I have a little hand cut one I've made. Um, and that's how I'm kind of getting results like this up in here. And that's looking pretty good. Um, of course, there is the problem of having to come back and do little corrections and stuff here, here and there. Uh, but for the most part, most of this looks pretty good. Um, and again, if somebody comes in and takes their hand and messes something up or chips something, it's as easy as patching that little hole, coming back with a little bit of the yellow, and then uh, I'm gonna keep a spare stencil to the side in the basement. That way, if I ever need to come fix anything, it's as easy as just fixing that little part. So, we've got most of this wall. We've got the big wall which is this one, which is where the sink and the toilet and everything will come. Again, sconces for reference. Uh, it's mostly done, but I've got a little top corner here and some of these thinner areas to fix. I have to do the edging here and of course around the entire top. And I have that little patch there. And then facing the door, I've got this wall, which is going to be tricky because <laughs> of this angle. Um, but I'll figure that out again. It'll be just bending the stencil where I need to get uh, it up there, the design up there. I suppose if I had to do it all over again, I might have uh, went ahead and taken this pattern and ordered some actual wallpaper, maybe. At the end of the day though, even though this is taking an excruciating amount of time, um, it, it's really easy to repair. If I ever mess this up, I have the file, the, the vector file, I can always get it printed again. I can always make another stencil, even if I have to hand cut it. You know, whereas with the paper, I have to patch the hole and make sure it's smooth with the paper and then match the colors really, you know, carefully and it could be a bit of a mess. So I think for sake of being able to present this room to you guys when you guys come and not have to worry about anything breaking or hurting my walls or destroying what would have been a very, very expensive amount of wallpaper, um, I think this is a good option. Um, do I recommend everybody go out and try to do this with a geometric pattern? No. Um, I think you could be quite successful though with a more, uh, let's say organic pattern. Uh, I've seen people do flowers and things like that. And especially if you're trying to go for a distressed look, I think this option could go quite easily. Um, or you could do like the rubber stamp method, like with uh, linoleum tiles. Um, people cut those and make the, their own papers. And I think that's quite possible, especially if you're not after something that has to be perfect every time. Mostly what I mean by that is just the gaps. Like if anything's off here at all whatsoever, your eye is immediately drawn to that spot. And so I think to do a stencil, even though this is a one color, fairly easy stencil to do, it's complex in the fact that it, if one thing's off, it throws the entire pattern. But overall, I am quite happy with the way it's turning out. Um, it's just taking longer than I would have ever imagined it would. Um, but that, you know, hey, that's okay. This is a, uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint. And uh, so I will continue marathoning on um, and uh, continue uh, <laughs> covering myself in bits of paint. It's, uh, it's kind of nice to be using spray cans though. It's like reliving my, uh, my younger days, I suppose. <laughs> Um, and I'm actually happy to be using paint again. Um, I mean, I grew up using a lot of this stuff, so all right, this is cool again. So Atlas is content, I'm content, life is pretty good. So, uh, you know, we lost some time this week, 
Uh, went and visited a buddy. I had a buddy in town from Austria, which is pretty cool. Mark, if you're watching this for whatever reason. Hi, man, hope you had a good flight back home. So that's gonna be my video this week, guys. I hope you guys had a wonderful week for yourselves. Uh, we'll catch you guys again next week, hopefully with a more completed bathroom. <laughs> I promise you guys, we will get through this. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you guys so much. And we're gonna see you guys again next time. Bye-bye.